Now this gospel is very interesting and, and does have a teaching for us. In order to understand the incident here in the synagogue at Capernaum, it will help if we go back and read earlier in the same chapter, chapter four in the Gospel of Luke. The venue in the first part of the chapter is Nazareth, and here we have Capernaum. Nazareth in the time of Jesus was a small hamlet, maybe about 400 people. They had only one washing area, one mikvah, which is the ritual washing bath, which gives us an indication that for ritual purposes, it was a small community. Capernaum, on the other hand, Capernaum uh, was a thriving metropolis at the time, maybe about 1,500 people, and it was a very important place because it was on the main trading route between uh, Egypt and Damascus. All the traders passed through uh, on the Via Maris, this trading route, and therefore it was very cosmopolitan. It was very mixed. Lots of news happening, the traders bringing the news, the caravans went through there. Interesting, that's where Matthew, the tax collector, that's where he had his uh, profession of collecting taxes, which means he was probably a wealthy man because he was taxing all the caravans that came through. To walk from Nazareth to Capernaum was about 40 miles. So it would have taken Jesus about uh, three or four days to walk that route. You can drive it today in a modern highway in a different way in about 20 or 30 minutes. But in the time of uh, Jesus, it was about a 40 mile walk. That's important because you will find in the first part of this chapter, Jesus is rejected in Nazareth. They drive him out. He doesn't do any miracles in Nazareth, and he will never go back to Nazareth again. Actually, Matthew, in chapter 9 of Matthew's gospel there, it says he makes Capernaum his hometown. He's rejected by the uh, judgmental, uh, religious fervor of the people of his hometown. And therefore, he does no miracles at Nazareth, his hometown. He leaves there, he never goes back there again and he makes Capernaum his new hometown. That's what Matthew tells us. Um, now what Luke wants to contrast for us here is the fact that in Nazareth he did no miracles, but in Capernaum it was open, it was cosmopolitan, it was mixed, it was uh, a fresh, a new venue and it was a welcoming place because in Capernaum, all were welcome. All were welcome at, and that's the place you can see miracles. You can only see miracles when all are welcome. The people back in Nazareth were enclosed. They thought they had the last word. Uh, they were looking inward, demanding rigorous religious fervor. However, the people over in Capernaum, they were mixed, they were open, they had new ideas. It was a very cosmopolitan place. And that became the hometown of Jesus. Now, if you go to Capernaum today, Nazareth today is a thriving town, by the way. It's got 75,000 residents. It's an Arab town. So from a small town in the time of Jesus, it now is a very large metropolis. It's the Arab capital of the northern part of Israel. Capernaum, on the other hand, was a thriving place in the time of Jesus, and now nobody lives there. Only the Franciscan friars live there who take care of the chapel. But interestingly, at Capernaum, there is a synagogue, all the, the ruins of a synagogue. It's not the synagogue that was spoken about here, but it's on the same footprint. So you do get a little idea. And tomorrow's gospel, by the way, is Jesus curing Peter's mother-in-law. That's also at Capernaum. 
So we'll keep Jesus in Capernaum here for a little bit of Luke's gospel. What does this teach us? You will only see the miracle if you're open, if you're free, if you're not prejudiced, if you're not judgmental, if you're not rigorous, if you come to believe that you don't have all the answers, and therefore when the Messiah comes in a manner you do not expect, you will be blessed if you're open and you're free and you're fear without fear, you're courageous, and your faith is so strong, your faith is so strong that you can accept differences. You know, when, when I was young, years and years ago, I said, if you question something, it's a sign your faith is weak. But that's not true. If something is questioned, if your faith is strong, you won't be bothered by questions. If your faith is insecure, then the questions will bother you. Here's the teaching now. We need to be open to God speaking to us in diverse ways. I have, you know, it's a very important part of my whole understanding of Jesus Christ being revealed today in the world. Um, there's, a, there's a sense of uh, Tyre de Chardon has this cosmic Christ, that Christ is the Word. John's Gospel begins, Christ is the Word, the one who is the center of all creation. Christ in you, Christ in me, Christ in people, Christ in creation. I mean, it's an enormous sense of theology and it appears here in this gospel. So you'll only understand the text of today if you read the whole chapter, chapter four in the Gospel of Luke, and you find this tension, this contrast between the inward looking, demanding, judgmental rigor of fervent religious people at Nazareth and the openness of the community at Capernaum, which indeed Jesus chose as his hometown. Keep in mind, God appears to us when all are welcome. Amen. And you, the people of Holy Family, have taught me all through the years of being here that indeed all are welcome.